my internet is causing problems for the world and I'm really upset about it. And I was reading all these blogs about Slow down, there are children in this neighborhood. I don't even know what that was. Was that like a Vespa, a motorcycle, a helicopter? Someone was going very fast. Calm down over there. Hey everybody, uh, how's it going? Welcome back to Reading in the Dark. My name is Byron and I read sometimes. Um, it is currently September 18th, 2021, which means that we are coming closer and closer to the end of the year. And I just watched this book tag on Ariel Bissett's channel. And I always kind of think she does it too early because it's not the end of the year yet. But in keeping with the spirit in which the tag is being offered, I decided, you know what? If she thinks it's time, maybe it's time. End of the year book tag. I mean, it's September, it's mid-September, almost late September. The Halloween season is coming. I'm about to start decorating the house. We are about to do some touch-up painting. We got those shelves up. We're doing some other things, just like cleaning, organizing, storing some stuff away in the house before, so that everything will feel really nice and clean and organized before I bring out all the Halloween decorations because I have a lot of them and and then Halloween starts and it will last throughout part of November for me. They might stay up until like a week before I decorate for Christmas. <laughs> like probably mid-November, Halloween will come down and Christmas will go up. And that's just who I am as a person. That's gonna take up a lot of my focus reading wise and then it'll be time to read Christmassy things. So there's like, it does feel like the end of the year to me. Cause there's not a lot of like, hmm, creative like reading plans that I could come up with for the end of the year because it's kind of being dictated for me by the seasons. So I guess I feel good about doing this book tag now. I think I've usually done it like in December, like, okay, the year is over. Um, but I'm gonna do it a little bit earlier this year and just see how that goes. Okay, so the first question is, am I ready to go into the questions? I don't know, like there's a lot of updates, like things I wanna like share with you about what's going on with the channel and what I'm doing with my life right now. Still very up in the air in terms of like my career. Nothing really to say there. I did hang the, uh, some shelves in the living room last night. Uh, my boyfriend and I finally got these shelves up. I've owned these shelves, which are apparently real walnut veneer, by the way. I did not realize that there was real wood involved. Uh, I've had these for like two years <laughs> and um, they've been sitting stacked three of them in their boxes on top of each other for two years since like before the pandemic and I keep moving them around the house thinking what if I put them there what if I put them there and then finally decided last night to put them on this wall in the living room by the front hallway and actually love them where they are they look really really good and they look pretty when they catch the light which comes in the windows etc etc so um that's exciting for me um and I've been reading quite a bit lately all basically thrillers and spooky things how is your reading going? Um, I tend to slump hard um, in November. The last couple of years I've tried to avoid that by just reading more October-y things in November. Um, and also life has been making me slump in a horrible way. So I have had long, long periods where I haven't read. So the fact that I'm reading right now, is very exciting and I wanna keep that going. And this kind of leads us right into the first question of this book tag. Are there any books you started this year that you need to finish? Um, not the Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. I know people like this book. It's I was not enjoying it. Uh, I was not what I was hoping for. I don't know. When I read the synopsis, I felt like this was like a, like a historical fiction version of the X Files or something, and that's not what it is. Um, it's r lovely writing, and I was bored, so I put it down. Um, I am currently. I mean, so so yes. The answer to this question is yes. Not the Essex Serpent. I'm currently reading Within These Walls by Inia Allborn, which I am so pleasantly surprised by. I picked it up because one of you recommended it to me, and I was like, yeah, I should probably maybe give her another shot, but I was nervous about it because I read The Shuddering and hated it. That book was two stars for me, I believe. Uh, it just had poorly written, cliched, young characters hanging out in the cabin in the woods during the winter being all immature and stupid and cliched and there was a girl and there was the love triangle which is a trope that I hate Blah, hated it and I was like this is not this is not an author for me but I thought I'd give her another shot and um, within these walls is way better I'm really enjoying within these walls 
Uh, it's giving me a lot more depth than I was expecting. So I'm, I don't know, maybe like halfway through that. It's been a quick read so far, so I have to finish that and I will. Um, and then the other book that I actually read a good portion of the first story from is uh, not here because it's on my uh, bed, uh, headboard of my bed, which is where I put the books that I'm like, read this. And that's Homesick for Another World by Otessa Moshveg, her short story collection from a few years ago which I have in hardcover and I haven't read yet. So I read the first like couple pages of the first story and I was like, oh, I'm really getting into this and stop because I'm not supposed to be reading this right now. My idea though, is that I will read like a story and then read another book and then read another story, which is kind of like what I like to do with uh, collections like that. So those are two books that I technically am currently in the middle of and want to finish. The second question is, do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? Um, I feel like I've been very close to you, and I hope that hasn't been off-putting. An autumnal book. I... not exactly. The, the book I will, I will use as an answer is The October Country by Ray Bradbury, which I think is also a short story collection, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And I have not read it, but it was also recommended to me by one of you years ago. And I have not read any Ray Bradbury. I also have Something Wicked This Way Comes and The Halloween Tree to read, but I feel like The October Country is the one that I'm gonna maybe love the most because it's a collection of short stories and it's all very October-y, obviously, because it has October in the title. So that's my <laughs> answer to that question. It's going, it's going well. Number three, is there a new release that you're still waiting for? No, no, there is not. I need to stop buying books and I'm not paying attention to what's coming out. There are two exceptions. <laughs> one, I'm stealing this answer from Ariel Bissett, actually, the new book by Otessa Moshveg, Lapvona, which is coming out on June 23rd, 2022, barring any catastrophes. As we know, our last book was delayed by a few months because of COVID. The little blurb for it says, in Otessa Moshveg's new novel, Lapvona, Lapvona, L-A-P-V-O-N-A. I once had a great aunt named Lavona, and when I searched this, Google asked me if I really meant to search Lavona, and I thought, oh, Lavona, but no. Anyway, in her new novel, Lapvona, set in the vanished medieval fiefdom of the same name, a motherless son and his bitter shepherd father must navigate dark times in their village, in which the only seeming check on the depravity of the local feudal lord is the witchy power of the village's blind midwife. So that sounds spooky and fun, and I'm into that. Also, in an interview that I was listening to recently with Otessa Moshveg, she said that she was currently working, the book that she was currently writing and working on was being written from the perspective of a ghost. And so that was a challenge and she was like, I hope I can pull it off. And then I was like, that's not Death in Her Hands, I don't think. Um, then I learned that Death in Her Hands was actually written five years ago. And she just revised it and finally brought it out last year, this year. So this must be what she was talking about. So, spoiler alert, I think she kind of gave that away. She mentioned something about writing from the perspective of a ghost, and I'm gonna assume that that's in Lapvona. So I'm excited about that. The other one uh, that I'm looking forward to is the next Rizzoli and Isles novel by Tess Gerritsen, and it's supposed to be out in July 2022. It's called Listen to Me. And there was a little synopsis, and I don't remember now. I have to look it up. Has something to do with a nurse being murdered? Detective Jane Rizzoli and forensic pathologist Maura Isles are investigating the gruesome murder of a nurse whilst also protecting a young student from a stalker. Okay. This should be fun because in case you don't know, Tess Gerritsen was a medical doctor, or I guess technically is, I don't know. Um, she had a practice. She was a physician and then became a writer, so she likes to include all kinds of medical detail in her thrillers, which tends to be uh, grisly and gruesome, and she gets a lot of mileage out of that, which is one of the reasons that she's special to me. So I would like to think that this is going to be like a nurse and a medical student and like a whole medical campus and like a whole story that revolves around doctors and stuff. That would be, that would be fun. Anyway, but those don't come out this year. So no, this year there are no new releases that I'm looking forward to. And I'll probably do a video about books that are coming out next year that I'm excited about at some point, and they will be on there. But uh, technically, I guess that was my long-winded version of saying, nah, what are three books you want to read before the end of the year? Okay, let me try to be a little bit more succinct in my answering of this question. The, uh, the Dracula Book of Great Vampire Stories. <sighs> I'm just sitting right here by Blanche. Edited by... Shepard. Who Shepard? I forget who. Leslie Shepard. So, and I think it includes Dracula's guest. 
Oh yeah, it includes Carmilla by Chardin Le Fanu, which is credited as being the inspiration for Dracula and Dracula's Guest and like a whole bunch of other stuff. So um, that's, that's cool. I've had this book for two or three years and I keep m mentioning it around this time of year and then not reading it. And I really want to actually read it this year, this time, and not have it in this video again next year. The second one is Powers of Darkness by Bram Stoker and um, Valdemar Asmundsen. Which, this is the book that's the retranslation of the Icelandic translation of Dracula back into English because it's very different and has been streamlined and made sexier and the story is slightly different and some of the characters are different and it has a foreword that was written by Bram Stoker and they believe that he collaborated on this and so that maybe this was an officially sanctioned like new version of Dracula that's very different and it was like wow, a discovery, like mind blown in the literary world a few years ago. And, I have, and I've heard it's honestly not as good as Dracula, but obviously because Dracula is one of my favorite books, I want to read it and I've had it for years and need to read it. Um, the third one is oh, the third book that I want to read by the end of the year. And this will probably, probably take up the bulk of November is The Shining by Stephen King. My friend Bert gave this to me for my birthday maybe two years ago, and I mentioned it on this channel. I already had so many things I was gonna read in that month, and I never got to it, and I'm a little intimidated by Stephen King, but I have a feeling that I'm gonna really enjoy his writing, and I wanna read a lot of stuff that he's written, and I was reading all these blogs about w Slow down, there are children in this neighborhood. Yeah, calm down over there. Um, so yeah, I have a feeling that I'm going to really enjoy Stephen King, and I was reading all these blogs, about where to start on your first reading of Stephen King, which book to start with. Uh, I just, you know what, it's, they all have different opinions and you can read in publication order and that sounds interesting, but like I have this book, I have like a comfy little paperback, mass market paperback that Bert gave me and I have never seen the movie. And so therefore I also have not seen the sequel that came out, Dr. Sleep either. And, and, I'm watching American Horror Story right now, and it has been compared, the story part of it, to The Shining. And so it just feels like the universe is saying, go, go to The Shining, read about this man in this hotel. Um, and so I'm going to read The Shining. And I'm going to just let myself take the entire month of November to do it, if need be. Um, I mean, it's, you know, it's like 700 pages. So it's long, but it's not like really it should take me an entire month, but I'm just going to like not stress about it. I'm going to start it uh, as soon as the October stuff is done. And that's sort of a, not a TBR, but a plan. Um, is there a book that you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? So my answer to this is kind of funny. The last book I read was Bathhouse by PJ Vernon. It's a thriller mystery. It's a very gay uh, thriller mystery. My internet is causing problems for the world, and I'm really upset about it. I just purchased this whole new Wi-Fi, this mesh Wi-Fi router system, and now my internet is going out. And it's not because of the router, it's because of my internet service. So I went to Spectrum, which is part of Charter, to get a new modem yesterday. It was a huge ordeal to take everything apart in my closet and install the new modem, and I did it, and it did not help. So that's really frustrating. Um, okay, so it says Oliver Park, a young recovering addict from Indiana, finally has everything he ever wanted. Sobriety and a loving, wealthy partner in Nathan, a prominent DC trauma surgeon. Despite their difference in age and disparate backgrounds, they've made a perfect life together. I don't really remember feeling like anything was made of the difference in their ages, or remember even feeling like they had a difference in ages, having just read this, but okay. But definitely different backgrounds. They've made a perfect life together with everything to lose. Oliver shouldn't be visiting house, H-A-U-S, a gay bathhouse. But through the entrance he goes and it's a line crossed. Inside, he follows a man into a private room and it's the final line. Whatever happens next, Nathan can never know. But then everything goes wrong, terribly wrong, and Oliver barely escapes with his life. He races home in full-blown terror. So basically, he cheats on his partner, or he, he intends to, and the guy that he meets actually tries to kill him, and he gets away is distraught, he, he is behaving strangely and not calling back his partner because he's running for his life, and then he gets in this shower and leaves the water running and doesn't realize it and there's all this water damage. The, basically the entire book is this guy, Oliver, trying to cover up all of the, the cascading consequences 
of this thing that happened that would not have happened if he had not been in a bathhouse. So it's just lies upon lies upon lies upon lies. And it's just like an onion and it unravels and there's so many layers to this book and I fucking loved it. I gave it five stars. It's one of the best thrillers I've ever read. And yeah, it was really fun that it was gay and stuff, but like, it was just good. If you enjoy a good thriller and a good mystery and you're like fine with reading about sexual situations, like, it's so good. Yeah, so that could become my favorite book of the year. I've already read it. So I don't know if that's really what this question means. I feel like this question is asking, is there a book you haven't read yet that you think could become your favorite? And I don't really know that the, I think the answer to that is no. It certainly could happen because I've only read like 13 books so far this year. I am super behind on my challenge, but I just read Bad House and I kind of think that might end up being my favorite. So that's my answer. I'm going to book tag jail if that was not the, what the question meant. The final question is, have you already started making reading plans for the next year? And the answer is an emphatic no. The only thing I will say is that I will try not to buy anything new unless it's a favorite author. And if I, any new books that I buy, I have to read right away. And for every new book that I read, I have to read something old that I already owned. But other than that, no. I would love to just like work all the way through my TBR pile or whatever, whatever we want to call the stack of books that I currently own but haven't read. So that's my really, my only So, so that's my answer for that question, and that's the end of this book tag. And I'm very grateful for you being here. If you've been here this long, you should comment the word. You know what? You should you should comment Wrigley below because my sister's cat Wrigley is not doing great, and um, I'm just thinking about my sister's cat. So comment Wrigley below if you got this far. That's a fun game we can play, and no shame. Just you know, if you did. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the uh, like button. It helps me a lot if you do that and if you comment and if you subscribe if you were not already subscribed. And until next time, I will be here in the dark reading. Goodbye.